you're asking to who everything is good how about you guys i was asking about mm-hmm. both of you actually good good abhi abhi yoga class khatam hua hai halat tight hai ha it was a very good class ha mujhe bahut mazaa aaya ha ha fine i was going to ask you guys how are the other classes going are you enjoying yeah we are enjoying yes. how about the food <laughs> <laughs> we are we are troubling uh, durgesh ji uh, ha <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know uh, today there was an yeah. discussion <laughs> yeah means we are we are uh, the naughtiest category student no we can <laughs> argue with teacher matlab <laughs> valid point hmm yeah it's okay i'm trying to understand but uh, yeah i mean i heard there was an intense discussion today on uh, food <laughs> that happens in ayurveda class because um, a lot of things like yeah, we, we, are, we are trying to understand actually i mean uh, as per our reading it's totally different I means what uh, because i teach uh, my students balanced diet and nutrition in my classes so Uh, if i go for that pattern that pattern is different than ayurveda hmm. yeah just different schools of thought i guess and yes. everyone has their own like basis support and that so yeah <laughs> that's okay good no but, but i think ayurveda ha uh, but i think ayurveda is like uh, all the traditional na so which is being followed since you know earlier time so that is why they huh. are following this so maybe this is a, and today we have uh, come up with so many you know uh, variations to the balanced diet and so that is why uh, we like it's the counter <laughs> counter <laughs> thing so no for my classes mo- uh, mostly i i teach because uh, junks uh, all these foreigner kids they love this junks and all no so my thing is more on vegetarian i i try to push them towards vegetarian food towards uh, dal especially because i i made this dal soup then i shared my recipe to my students also miss even i am a pe teacher but we we do cooking classes also sometimes so that uh, dal i just made very simple without oil without any ghee with vegetables mm-hmm. like uh, tomatoes uh, carrot and um, spinach and that that really good for people those who have a uh, little iron uh, deficiency or vitamin so they can take this this kind of food yeah that's okay this discussion should take place in durgesh ma'am's class only i think she'll be able to like uh, give you more insight <laughs> no no she her point of was uh, actually it was correct and so um, she was towards uh, ayurveda we were towards uh, uh, you know the balanced day to day thing yeah so we were talking about day to day thing she was talking about the ayurveda and it, it's really means ayurveda ages and ages all those things are coming that means that somewhere it's authentic so we have to respect those things yeah yes okay so let's start the pranayama class yeah yeah <laughs> this will this discussion can continue in your ayurveda class <laughs> <laughs> okay so back in next trick just gently close your eyes and start observing your breath observe the natural flow of the breath and watch the state of your mind
and allow your breath to naturally become slow, long and deep. As you begin to observe the breath, it has the tendency to become subtle. Just observe this change. And slowly, if you feel ready, you can begin to add Kumba after the inhalation. You can just hold your breath for two to five seconds. And then exhale. Making sure that the breath is long by now. If it isn't, don't practice Kumba. If it has become long and deep, then you can add the practice of Kumba. Make sure that you're not forcing yourself as you hold your breath. And then you prepare yourself for chanting over three times, followed by three chanting. After your next exhalation, begin to inhale for all. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Join both the palms together in front of the chest and up with the palms together. Place them over the eyes. And very slowly while blinking and looking at the palm, open up your eyes, come back with a smile. And namaste to everyone. Let us begin today's session. So yesterday we did uh, completed the practice of Kapal Bhati. So uh, any doubts in that so far, like yesterday when you practiced? And did you practice after yesterday also? Like, did you find the time? Did you, uh, like, give it another try? Uh, do we feel sleepy after, like, one hour or one and a half hour after doing mm. Kapal Bhati? No, uh, it shouldn't happen. But if you are tired, then it might happen. So I told you yesterday also, like, the practice of Kapal Bhati, if you do it during the night, you won't be able to sleep your sleep will be disturbed. So, um, 
maybe you were tired because of other okay. reasons also For, okay. like you think it was yeah. specifically kapal bhati yes. no 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 not sure maybe all those things like asanas and everything yeah. that must be the case yes thank you any other thing that you guys want to share if you practiced apart from the class i was uh, practicing earlier but yeah you showed uh, me the proper and correct way so yeah i i felt really good yesterday and i i slept also maybe because of i was very tired okay hmm. but yeah. yes i will uh, i will keep in my mind especially night time i will avoid to do kapalbhati yeah. yeah because these are like activating pranayam so we have relaxative pranayams also but this is one of the activating one so today what we are going to do we are going to uh, cover surya bhedan pranayam that is also an activation uh, pranayam okay um, i have just one query so uh, what kind of benefits we are getting from kapalbhati okay so on a physical level there is a lot of cleansing that takes place so uh, your sinuses they are cleansed so and uh, like forehead i told you the meaning of kapal so forehead so yahan ka pura jo cleansing hota hai this area is cleansed okay with the practice of kapal bhati second the heat in your body is increased so it has an impact on like um, all of those processes as well so bath related uh disorders all of these are also somewhere uh, like uh, tackled when you do kapal bhati okay because it increases the heat in the body so it's a cleansing process like so that is one of the things because it comes under shat karma then um also like your abdomen is exercised so when you consciously and actively exhale uh, during this pranayam so it uh, builds up the strength in your abdominal uh, muscles and it also activates all the organs that are present in the abdominal area okay and spiritually also it has a lot of uh, relevance so uh, it's related to your third eye so cleansing of this area once again helps you to um, clear all the blockages that are there uh, sinus blocks the yeah Sinus is too cleansed. Yeah. If there is yeah, because uh, I felt uh, because I have sinus, hmm. so I I felt that relief. Hmm. Yes. And uh, all this uh, pranayam, uh, do we have to do daily? This all cycles, or we can choose one at a time and one day one uh, pranayam we can perform. So if you want to see the effect of a particular pranayam, then go for. at least like give it around uh, 30 40 days of practice like then you would see what kind of so one pranayam one pranayam but we should have the pranayam, but let me tell you this before the pranayam you really need to make sure that uh, you have perfected all three breaths and nadi okay. yeah that okay and yeah all means like um, can we do kapal bhati Uh, alom vilom nadi shodna in one day or we can choose a days and we can uh, practice you can do them together so if you see the common okay. yoga protocol yeah over there so yesterday also you guys asked where should we place kapal bhati so in the common yoga protocol uh, which is generally practiced on 21st june uh, after the practice of asanas first thing that you do is kapal bhati then you practice nadi shodna then you go to the next pranayam so you can club these pranayams together but just make sure that heat generating are together and then the relaxative ones are together so that you are flowing in one from one direction to the other don't uh, do this that you are practicing kapal bhati then you are uh, basically going for some relaxative one then again you are generating heat in the body so try that there is a proper uh, pattern uh, in the okay, pranayam okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, What is I the pattern you said? Sorry. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. 
I was just asking, uh, like you said, uh, after asanas, uh, we should do kapal bhati. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, asanas already created heat in our body. Then again, we are creating heat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So see, once again, you have done asanas, there is heat, then kapal bhati, maybe surya bhedan, maybe bhaskwe ka pranayam. Then we will do these, we will do the techniques. But I'm just telling you, all of these are heat generating practices. So, once the heat is generated, like, I'm not saying that consider asana and pranayama. Right now, I'm not considering them separately. I'm just saying heat generation and relaxation. These are the two categories I'm taking. So, all of these practices are generating heat, okay? Then mm-hmm. after that, you go into relaxation. So, then go for uh, uh, those, like, um, shitni, shitkari pranayam or brahmari pranayam. Then add those ones, like, because by the end of the yoga session, you have to regain your energy and you have to be relaxed also. Like So after the yoga session, generally uh, in the end, we focus on activating the parasympathetic nervous system, okay, which is connected to relaxation. So that is how you uh, should go about it, ideally speaking. Okay. 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 Yes, so, um, so is it okay for the teenagers also, like for 15 years, uh, kids to do a Yeah, I mean, see, so first of all, you should not force them to do that. Okay, so you should not force them to do that. Yeah, I mean, see, so for them, actually, generally, they already have a lot of heat in the body. Okay, so don't make them practice a lot, like, because uh, it will increase more heat in their body. But at the same time, um, practicing kapal bhati would clean a lot of like toxins from the body so yeah, as because, an, uh, kara sakte. Unko kar yeah, because, bhi kar if you have a sinus uh, problem so that i was thinking like if they can do Sorry? they have a sinus problem so that's why i was thinking if they can do a kapal bhati ha, that will cleanse the sinus area no? yes so it will expel okay. out um, the Okay. Yeah, one more thing, because uh, I teach swimming also. So after swimming, can I teach my students kapal bhati? Means, are they allowed to do kapal bhati? Means after swimming, swimming session. See, that is when the body temperature is varied. Like when we swim, body temperature. Yeah, changes. body temperature. It's yeah. It dips down. No, but body temperature. Uh, it's not dipper down because uh, see when you when you do for. Um, go for 200 meter, 500 meter, 800 meter, your body temperature increase. Either you are in the water, but your your blood circulation is improving. Your temperature increase, not decrease. So if w- water temperature is near about 25, so your body temperature might be 30, 32, 33. It is like that. Yeah. So all of your students like go for more hours of like like yeah, saying. yeah. We we start our warm up with 200 meters. So 200 meter means if uh, we go for 50 meter pool, so that is four rounds, and then after that different different drills. So one hour session, they almost do near about eight to 800 meter to 1000 meter. Okay, okay. So you're saying that after uh, swimming, can they practice kapal bhati? Yes, yes. Is it is this question coming up because a, you are connected to that part where? toxins are released or because overall yeah, the- toxins as well as uh, many students they are because most of the swimmers they f- uh, face this sinus problem okay so yeah for sinus it is good like where you are able to expel out no when you do kapal bhati make them practice okay. jalnati jalnati okay. so there uh, for in your shat karma practice so jalnati is very effective in uh, sinusitis so that is yeah but jalnati that pot here it's like impossible to find no mm, yeah so um, one thing when you come to india like a lot of them with you <laughs> <laughs> yes i think it's better idea yeah because Thank you. Is very therapeutic but this is something you will discuss in therapy so when ma'am covers different diseases for you guys so you can uh, discuss this in therapy with her she'll be able to give you more app uh, suggestions for sinusitis. No, first we I, I need to learn because without learning me and teaching others, it's not advisable. So I will come uh, for practical classes that time. Definitely, I will learn from you guys. 
yeah yeah so in your ayurved classes those ones that are going on uh i think maybe therapy is included i'm not sure but if it is then you will cover disease wise also so if you do okay. like if you do in the online classes then you can ask her this she will tell you specifically for uh, particular diseases what are the practices that you can you guys can do okay 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 thank you uh so have i addressed all the doubts yes i'm, I'm clear ready. have i cleared your doubt also yes yes all clear okay okay so uh, we'll practice kapal bhati also today but let me first explain surya bhedan pranayam to you okay so now we are entering the pranayam uh, the field of pranayam okay so the first pranayam which is generally talked of is surya bhedan pranayam okay so you guys can write it down also surya bhedan pranayam i just write this down in the chat box also so it's a uh, s u r y a v e d h a n a surya bhedan surya bhedan pranayam okay so first thing is it's all, always performed in sitting posture okay once again each and every pranayam most of them at least except ujjayi when we come to ujjayi we will discuss okay uh, all the pranayams will be performed in sitting posture so you can adopt padmasan sukhasan siddhasan ya yeah, swastikasan you can adopt go for any of these okay so second thing that we come to when surya bhedan pranayam is talked of is the technique so you will generally find two techniques of surya bhedan pranayam out of which one is a variation the original technique is different and one technique you will find in a lot of places but it is not the original technique it is a variation of the original technique okay. so let me explain the technique first so your back and neck will be straight in this pranayam yeah you're sitting in some comfortable meditation posture and once again you are going to form the pranayam mudra yeah or vishnu mudra as you are comfortable okay so surya and bhedan so surya is the right nostril i told you in philosophy class also the surya nadi or the pingla nadi so that is what the surya part represents over here and bhedan means to pierce okay so surya bhedan pranayam is when you are piercing the pingla nadi and there is cleansing taking place in that nadi okay so the purification of the pingla nadi when we are working specifically on that then it is called surya bhedan pranayam in nadi shodhana we are working on balancing both the nadis ida and pingla yeah we are trying to establish harmony in both of them but in surya nadi we are specifically working on activating the pingla nadi which is once again connected to your sympathetic nervous system or generally speaking when you are very active during the day then your pingla nadi is good yeah so we form the pranayam mudra or vishnu mudra in this practice so that we can close the left nostril okay so i will close the left nostril and i will begin by inhaling through my right nostril okay so in anulom vilom we start with left over here we are starting with the right nostril so i will inhale through my right nostril then i will close my right nostril and exhale through my left nostril all the breathing will take place through the nose only 
unless and otherwise you are instructed okay same goes for asana practice also any practice unless and until you are instructed that there is some other way in which you are supposed to breathe you are always going to breathe through your nose only okay so inhale through right and exhale through left i will write this down also so let's discuss the variation i was talking about so in certain places you will find that the same mudra is there yeah and then you close the left nostril you inhale through the right nostril and you exhale through the right nostril only. so i'm not changing my hand i'm uh, not changing my nostril i'm inhaling and exhaling through the right nostril only. but this is not the original technique okay when you inhale through the right and exhale through the left that is the technique we are going to work on in our classes okay so once again like uh, this is a heat generating pranayam okay so this will help you to like especially in winter so in summers don't practice this pranayam because it will create more heat in the body you can practice there is no like um, so a yogi practices throughout the year so there is no restriction on practicing this pranayam during summers but generally speaking why would you want to practice something that is generating so much heat in the body yeah so don't go for many rounds okay so like especially during winters don't go for a lot of rounds in winters you can increase the number of rounds and you can practice this continuously and daily you will see that you know generally your body heat is increasing when you practice this and it will help you in the winters but once again do not practice too much why because you are working only on one nadi in surya bhedan okay so when you're working on only one nadi so right is associated with extroversion with activity so don't over activate the right nadi okay same goes for the left one also so when we will do chandra bhedan pranayam which is the exact opposite of this pranayam in that also like uh, we are like uh, we generally like tell students that don't go for over activation of any of the one uh, I, for either of the nadis okay okay so once again because it's a heat generating pranayam first benefit that it will have on your body is that vat related disorders are uh, cured because of this pranayam okay. so on a physical level heat is increasing vat related issues are tackled with this pranayam mucus and all again melts because heat is generated it works on your digestion also but if you over practice it can hamper your digestion okay so don't go into over practice of uh, surya bhedan pranayam until a particular point it will aid in uh, aid you in processes and digestion but if you go for more rounds then the natural energy will be disturbed okay then uh, one thing that you have to be careful of when you are practicing this pranayam is that the ratio should always be equal okay for a beginner it's always equal ratio so one is to one if you are practicing kumbhak then all of them will have one is to one is to one is to one okay on a mental level what is happening when you do this pranayam is there is activation of the mind so your alertness and awareness will increase
yeah people who have depression who do not want to go outside and interact with the world it's a very good pranayam for them to practice and once again people who have anxiety they should avoid practicing this pranayam okay so it will generally aid you to interact more with the world and uh, uh, basically take you to a point where social like you are able to be more social more extroverted more dynamic okay. what is that mm-hmm. okay on a spiritual level once again as i said it's working on the pingla nadi so it's making sure that the pingla nadi is being cleansed at that point of time and it leads to awakening of the pingla nadi proper activation okay and second thing that happens uh, in this pranayam is that when you are inhaling okay i'm working on pingla nadi okay i'm activating it and when i exhale through the ida nadi or my left nostril then even impurities in the ida nadi are expelled out of the body okay so let me go for the uh, contraindication like things that you have to take care of like situations in which you are not going to perform this pranayam so first thing is high bp and heart rate like we discussed yesterday okay so these people will not perform again acidity anxiety people who have anxiety who have ulcers should not perform this pranayam hyper acidity also hyperacidity uh, yeah 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 vertigo these people are not supposed to perform this pranayam okay next thing is if somebody is really extroverted so they should not go for this pranayam why because already they are hyperactive Yeah, so they need to go for cooling pranayam. Okay, hyperthyroidism when the thyroid is high, surabhidan should not be practiced because already your metabolism is very quick at that point of time. So this works overall on your metabolism. Surabhidan pranayam, so it should not be practiced in that condition. okay so these are your contraindications when you practice surya yoga okay so retention we will talk of later but right now just the ratio and your sitting position is important so if any one of you has any of these conditions don't go for this practice okay you can just sit and relax you can go for anulom vilo while i'm instructing for surya yoga so first we'll start with the practice of kapal bhati today okay and then we will practice surya vedanta any questions in the technique or like uh, like you said about acidity so it's like uh, i used to have like few days back i was having so right now i'm fine so it's okay then also uh is it a recurring problem or is it like uh, sometimes it happens and sometimes it happens and then it's off were you detected with some hyperacidity or something like that no <laughs> it's like i uh, it's like uh, what i eat you know and then i started and then i uh, started noticing uh, what triggers me so i'm avoiding all those things so yeah oh. it's not that much but yeah sometimes it happens so see uh, you can uh, like because there is no extreme condition you can practice it but then again go for less strong and okay. already like if you are in india uh, it is uh, like uh, overall speaking 
uh, hot weather right now so right now we're not going to practice much main point of focus is the text okay all right and if after today you feel that your acidity is bad then quickly hmm. avoid okay the <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah okay so we'll start with the practice of kapalbhati everybody just come in any comfortable sitting posture close your eyes you just start watching your breath observe the natural flow of breath and as your breath begins to settle it will naturally become slow long and deep reach to that point take your time go at your own pace and don't force your breath just keep the mind focused on the breath and prepare yourselves for the practice of kapalbhati we'll go for three rounds and the strokes are going to be 15 if you feel that you want to go beyond 15 you can do so don't go above 25 and if you feel that you are still developing and go for a count lesser than 15 just make sure that each exhalation comes with equal force we'll go for the three breaths so inhale deeply exhale and then Exhale. Inhale. And then begin with the practice of Kapalbhati. Once you have completed your strokes. you can exhale completely with the last stroke and then allow your breath to flow in and if you feel that you don't want to breathe just let your body be You just observe the changes in your abdomen, the abdominal area, or you can even focus on your third eye or the space between your eyebrows.
check your posture and make sure that your lower back is straight. And just observe the impact of the body. Just observe Then go for the second round. So after this exhalation, inhale deeply, then exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, and then begin your practice by going into active exhalation. Make sure that the rest of your body is still. Your face is relaxed. And with your last exhalation, expel out all the air from the body. And once again, straighten up your back. And with closed eyes, either focus on the abdomen or the Third eye. Take your time. To observe. Now we'll go for the third round. If you feel you're tired or if you're feeling dizzy, suspend the practice. If you feel that you can go for another round, then just make sure your back is straight. And begin to inhale deeply. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And then begin your practice. Make sure that the first stroke and the last stroke are the same. Spelled out with the same intensity. And go at a similar pace for all the information. And on your last round, it will completely straighten up your back. 
and observe the impact of the palbhati. Just observe the state of your mind. We'll go for one round of Surya Bhidan Pranayam. There would be five repetitions in this round. Once again, straighten up your back. Left hand is placed on the left knee, palm facing upwards. Make the pranayama mudra or Vishnu mudra with the left, oh, sorry, right hand. Exhale completely and close your right nostril. And then start inhaling through the right nostril. Once you have inhaled, close the right nostril and exhale through the left nostril. Then close the right nostril. Inhale. Sorry, close the left nostril and inhale through the right nostril. Close the right nostril and exhale through the left nostril. Go for three more rounds. Inhaling through the right and exhaling through the left. And after you finish the three rounds, just observe your natural breath. Observe the changes. From Kapal Bhati, the Surya Pedan Samaya. Join with your palms together in front of the chest. And up both the palms together. And then place them over your eyes. Very slowly while blinking and looking at your palm. Open up your eyes. Gently come back. Okay. So one more thing that I forgot to mention. Uh, Surya Vedan Pranayam, once again, because it's a pranayam, don't practice immediately after eating. Yes, it helps you with your overall uh, digestion and like your digest digestive ability. But keep a gap of three to four hours before practicing this pranayam. Like if you're doing it in the evening, like this should be the amount, time amount of gap that you have to take. Okay, so don't practice immediately after eating because 
uh, once again works on that aspect also. So pranayam always make sure that your stomach is empty. Okay. So how was your experience? First, tell me like how was it with Kapal Bhati today? Were you able to do it more easily with the progress of the rounds, or was it straining you out? Um, it is progress, but I felt uh, heat, a little heat on my face today. Okay, with Kapal Bhati. Sorry? That's okay, that's okay. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. How about the others? Like, how was the experience with Kapal Bhati? Uh, yesterday, I, uh, I was not there with the practice time. So I watched the video, but today I just do it. So uh, I, uh, I did two rounds only because once you said that you are feeling dizzy, but I started, my head was aching little. I don't know. After the practice? After the practice, yes. Okay. So That's I stopped. Hmm. After two rounds. After two rounds, I... So when you said to stop, so to suspend, so I suspended. That's good. Okay. Good. If you're feeling dizzy, if you're feeling zada ho ra hai, so hmm. you can get to suspend. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, from... Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So it, it's fine to have that... Uh, this issue see initially you will uh, like experience multiple things but once you get used to the practice then um, this will not okay. come up so okay, okay. Uh, give it two three more tries if this mm -hmm. persists then we will discuss okay oh, but it okay. will take you a while to adjust to the practice because immediately we are just focusing on the exhalation and we are just uh, leaving the body like to inhale like passively so mm -hmm. it will take a while for you to adjust all of you to adjust okay okay for me yeah. actually uh, while inhaling i feel a little heaviness uh, exhalation was fine but inhalation was heavy like i have to work on it when i was inhaling in kapal bhati and no in this pure uh, bhedan Okay, in Surya Bhedan, you, uh, you are making effort while inhaling. Yeah, right. Okay, so you have to work on this. This is something okay. you will have to work on. When okay. uh, you are, like, whenever there is force, uh, we have to try to get it to a point where it becomes effortless. Okay, okay. so work on abdominal breathing, work on the three-part three uh, breath. That will help you. Okay, yeah. Yes, Yeah. Uh, for after the third round, I thought it will be fourth round also for Kapal Bhati, but uh, for third round only, I was like, okay, if it is fourth round, I will not do. It was like that. Yeah. Today we did back to back round. Like yeah. yesterday we did one round, we took some break, and then we did the other round. So yes, even yes, though yes. there were two rounds, mm -hmm. there was a break. So today we did so, not take a break. Yes, yes. So three rounds were okay. And then uh, in uh, Surya Bhedan, uh, after uh, uh, third, uh, second round, uh, the exhalation, uh, I could feel the heat on my fingers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. That. Good, good, good. Anybody else on Surya Bhedan, any issues with that? Like, how was your experience? Because we only practiced one round. So, maybe, and we practiced in conjunction with uh, Kapal Bhati, but still, like. Uh, I can't say right now because it, <laughs> so it's like, but uh, maybe I'm just like, uh, uh, I can feel my, you know, breathe on in my, inside my nose. I don't know. The, I, I can't judge that thing. So, I. So it's it was fine. Okay, Koi Nikal, we practice more practice in Surya Bhidan. Yeah? So then we will see how it's working and what it's doing. Okay. Any other issues that you face? Like technique, everybody's clear about the technique, what you have to do. 
Yes, yes. Yes. Yes, yes. So as you progress in the practice, you guys will be able to go deeper into this technique and see what is happening exactly. Like you are feeling heat and all of these things have already uh, started to happen. So it is somewhere having its impact. How many rounds we can go for maximum? Sorry? Or how many rounds we can perform? Like see, uh, we did five times today. So a uh, we like over here it's uh, summers also so I went for less rounds but you can start with ten rounds when you do this like but don't go for too many rounds like maximum uh, like fifteen to twenty it's fine or lesser it's better so fifteen twenty is okay yeah okay. but uh, I mean there is no specific number that you put on this practice but. Uh, there is a point where you will know that you have overactivated, like you are practicing too much. There is overactivation of your uh, Pingla Nadi and how it shows is okay. when your activeness increases in the body. Yeah. So until a particular point, you will recognize when you cross that line. Right? It's a very thin line. You will recognize when you cross that. Okay. So five, okay. ten minutes. People go for five, ten minutes of practice also, but we are beginners, so go for 10, 20 rounds first, try to perfect them first, then go like increase your practice. Okay, uh, so overall schedule, if you roughly count, like asanas and pranayam would be one hour to one, one uh, hour, 30 minutes or? Uh, we can uh, go for within one hour. What like is your purpose? Like, what is the purpose uh, of practicing all of this? That it depends on that. Okay. If you are going for general, you, like how we are doing yoga these days, uh, yeah, if you are going for gen, uh, like general well being, then you can include all of this, like in the package of one, one and a half hour, but uh, like for a yogi, like uh, this practice is increased. Like he has to practice pranayam four times in a day. Like as per Gherin Sahita, it is written that four times in a day, a yogi. Four times, okay. Yeah, so yeah. In each text, there is some detailing that has been given about, you know, the number of forms or the practice. But again, it depends on what you are looking for, what you're trying to achieve. So general people like us, uh, one hour, one and a half hour is fine. Yeah, you can include that in, uh, like, in an overall session. You can include this, but once again, like, for common people, it is very hard to just stick to abdominal breathing and like all those practices, but it is very um, risky to step into further practices without perfecting all three of them. Like not very risky no. because right now we are just learning, like as students, we are just learning, but I'm talking about the long term. Like if you want long term practice, ke liye jana ho, hai yeah. La, long term chale. Aur aap khud hi kar rahe ho na? Aap kisi ko karwane so agar aap is cheez ko spiritually approach kar rahe ho to sabse pehle aap ek ek breathing ko perfect karo okay nahi mera matlab tha pura session ki baat kar raha tha jisme yoga asana aur pranayam include karke koi samjhane ki koshish kar raha hu main aapko okay one hour okay that is why i'm saying this because you are asking for your own practice it's very easy for us to make a protocol which ha which is all inclusive, like your balanced diet, yeah. But mm -hmm. what is your purpose? And if you have this understanding that okay, I need to perfect all my uh, three all the three breaths before I go into pranayam practice, then your protocol will include only breath work on that level unless and until you perfect that. Okay, okay, okay. Any other doubt? 
okay so one more thing for people who have sinusitis kapal bhati can be performed acha practice hai but uh, in their case reduce the pressure okay so because you will see that with excessive practice like especially for a lot of people and there is a lot of pressure that is being put during uh, when you are experiencing sinusitis so kapal bhati causes irritation okay to to avoid that irritation practice kapal bhati but uh, at the same time like reduce the pressure that you apply during that practice okay so let's end today's session so back in next train you can gently close your eyes and observe your breath we'll chant om one time followed by shri shanti after your next exhalation inhale deeply for om shanti 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 join both the palms together in front of the chest and wrap both the palms together place them over the eyes and very slowly while blinking and looking at the palm open up your eyes come back with a big smile and namaste to everyone i will see all of you for your philosophy class tomorrow Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Bye bye. Bye.